welcome back to Reaper Pro Tips after a long break. With me, your host and disembodied hand, Quindy, disembodied beard, John, every once in a while, Ron pops in. You know, it's us. It's us. Ah. Ah. You're doing geek stuff on New Year's Day. That's, 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 a, that's an honored tradition. That's an honored tradition. I spent all of yesterday playing video games and um, knitting and uh, playing with Kiki, which was very refreshing. It was a very refreshing day off. I want another one. <laughs> That's a problem with those days off. You're like, why can't I have these every day? <laughs> Hello, Quindy. I hope everyone had a good Christmas. David loves his switch. When, thanks to everybody who contributed to that discussion, he spent most of yesterday playing Zelda. So I think it's a hit. <laughs> yes. Yes, it was very good. Uh, oh, I don't want that there. I want that there. There we go. Putting away some rust colors from last time. See, if I would have just looked at my table, Quindy, I would have known what we worked on the last time we worked. But, uh, perception? Eh. Hello, green users. I hope you guys had a good Christmas, too. I like it. Another, yes. Alrighty. We are barbarian in 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 today. Yeah, well, I've tried, you know, since um, this this past year, actually, I've been striving to keep it more uh, more organized, Quindy, because I feel overwhelmed when I get too cluttered, and I feel like I don't want to work. So I have uh, striven to to reform myself on that count, and somewhat succeeded. Not always right after the stream, but I at least try to clean things up when I like pass by my desk later or when I sit down to work again, I spend some time neatening it before I begin again so that things don't just explode, you know? Yeah, good. Yeah, I did my, um, I did my grand, grand fooding. Thank God that only happens like every year, <laughs> once every year. <laughs> like after, after the second day of fooding, I was like, uh, and now I want three days where I don't cook. So we had leftover tri-tip, which was our Christmas Eve uh, thing. And I made latkes because latkes are my favorite Jew food, as David puts it. David's like, I told him, I want this to be a tradition every year. He's like, you know, it would have been much easier if you hadn't made latkes. And I was like... But the latkes are the point. <laughs> Cook large chunk of meat and then make the tastiest potato pancakes. It's just, um, so yes. So I decided that's my, that's my tradition, even though it adds work, but they're so tasty. I guess potato and onion pancakes. That's why the onion makes it for me. I don't like, actually don't like hash browns, but I like latkes because one third of it is onion. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, rearrange so you have a separate painting workspace. That's a really good idea because then you can always be set up. And that helps in finding time to paint. If you've got a nook or a corner or a something. I'm sure you can do it, Quindy. I have faith. I have faith. So David got me one gift and it was actually a gift I've been wanting for a very, very, very long time. Because I remember when the first one of these came out and I was very intrigued by it. But it was always out of my price range. So I asked, um, I wanted a uh, digital notebook for years and years and years and years. And uh, so he got me the Remarkable 2, which is probably the best of the digital notebooks. And the reason I want it is because when I write, I like to mind map and scribble and uh, make a very disorganized page when I take notes. And then I, that aids my creative process and not having lines and not having to, you know, to, to type it. Like, but that means I've got chunks of Bristol board everywhere with stuff all over it, right? So the digital notebook will help me keep all these things digitally in a nice little space that I can tag and label. 
so yeah, so I'm, I was playing with it a little bit. I haven't played with it nearly enough, but, um, but yeah, I, I look forward to being able to do my little mind maps. And then if you, if you're, um, it t technically does a pretty good job of this, but it will also convert your text to type if you need it to. Yeah, exactly, Aiden from Marvel. That's that's the best thing is when you like fill your water cup and paint, and then you and get your paint on, and you're ready. Good twist. Oh my, I'm glad those turned out. I made. I started making a swatch for a new cowl. That's because my existing cowl is just too long. Just too long. I need something that's a little bit shorter. It's like, I can wrap it in three, but if I wrap it in two, it's not snug enough around my throat for me to be happy. Um, it'll let cold air in, and it's too long uh, for the body of it. Because I, when I um, measured it, when I originally swatched it, I forgot to account for the fact that it's going to get longer with blocking. So this time I'm going to go a little bit more. Um, ah, traditional holiday chili. Nice. That sounds pretty good, actually. Dried cranberries in there. But yeah, I'm just gonna use some of my. I'm using my yarn, some of my yarn that I got when I went out with my mom yarn shopping when she was here. So it's a really pretty blend. I think it's got some alpaca. It's got something in it, maybe a little bit of cashmere. It's, it's a blend, but it's got like it's really soft. It's nice and soft. Hey, Roger, thanks for the forty months. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did. I got my I got a digital ta tablet I've been wanting for almost 20 years. Digital notebook, sorry. <laughs> Cat pet. Yeah, I figured. Figured there's always got to be a kitty spot. All right, let's work on some of this brown leather, getting it looking a little bit nicer today. I believe I used black and brown on this. I don't want to bring it up too rich. I think I'm going to bring it up with some shield brown or mixing in some driftwood. I could mix in some rich leather and fade it out with white as well, which is one of our original components. Where is my black and brown? There it is. Which will make it more golden coming up, although it may make it um, be too close to the other leathers. So maybe shield brown is the right choice. Whenever you are going muted with a color scheme and you want a muted mid-brown, shield brown is really your main choice. You can mix something by adding in something like driftwood to it, a deeper brown. <laughs> Um, like I do with russet brown. Russet brown driftwood is one of my favorite mixes. Uh, but just be wary that you don't get too close to other colors and that uh, you don't get too intense. Like if I use something like oiled leather or harvest brown to highlight this, it would be too much. Oh, interesting. Check dinner. Interesting. Look under it. Alrighty, and you can see that these colors actually do have a little bit in common. It's just that rich leather is so much more intensely golden than shield brown. So I could do a little bit of a mix there. I could use this and add in just one drop of this, um, which I think I will. Let's just do that. So let's tackle our leather today. Yes, otherwise I got... For some reason, everybody everybody in the world got me hand cream this Christmas. I think it's funny when that happens. As long as it's something that I really like and can use, I don't mind. Like, everybody in the world getting me socks was fantastic. Do it again. Um, I love fuzzy socks. Warm socks for the holidays. But this year it was everybody and their brother giving me hand cream. It also didn't help that, that the day before, like the 23rd, I had gone out to do final shopping, final food shopping, and got aggroed by a combo pack of a hand cream I've wanted to try for a while and um, holiday scented uh, dish soap, so, or holiday scented hand soap, which I also have a weakness for. 
So I already had bought myself a hand cream and then I got a box with three more and then I got a box with two more. <laughs> I have a little bit of hand cream now, just a little. Do you ever have that happen, guys? Where, where for some reason, just like serendipity, everybody gets you the same kind of thing. Oh, ribs, cornbread, mashed potatoes. Sounds great. Oh, yeah. If the rub is done right um, and it's uh, and it's nice and moist, ribs are fit. I usually don't need mine with sauce. Even though I have that tasty caramelized onion sauce now. My in-laws got me a uh, CrossFit jump rope, so now I have another option for my home gym, which is nice. I have to add it to my uh, my app that generates my workouts. Oh, nice, Carnico. Nice. They all went in a group and got everything sweet and sweet and glittery. That's great. It's when you know your friends know you. <laughs> that sounds cool. My in-laws also got me a, a new shirt for working out in. Just something real lightweight and, and wicking. So I didn't really have a dedicated workout shirt. I was just wearing t-shirts. So I'm kind of happy about that. All right. So when we put that shield brown in, you can see that it is a lot more golden. Um, I've got one drop of the black and brown in there. And that's going to knock that way down because of all the black in there. I may need to put a little red in here to shift it back if it starts going green. But black and brown has more red in it than walnut does. So it might be okay. So we're going to mix this up and see. Oh, nice. Yoga mat. Yay. Oh, Snow Fairy. Yeah, I think I've heard of that. Very cool, Kernico. Yeah, that's a good color, actually. I hadn't. I don't think I'd ever uh, mixed shield with uh, blackened before, but this is a nice dark brown. It's actually not as black as it looks on the monitor. When I bring this over, you guys can see. There it is. So this is a nice muted brown. I actually like this quite a bit. So I'm not going to add any rich leather to it. I think it's good. And we got to mix up the original color. So we'll start with that, which I think will work, and then we're going to go shield brown. I woke up today being very feeling very clear-minded and ready to work, which is uh, lovely and shows the value of days off. I was feeling a little bit burned out before. I think I need to watch that. I do tend to work on the weekends, even if it's just like mornings. And of course I stream on Saturdays. So the only day I truly have off is Sunday, but then sometimes, you know, I have right club every other week and then I do, um, might work on some dog crap or something, but I feel like I need to schedule in more multiple days not doing anything necessary. Hey, War Shadow. Okay, so we're going to start with these. They're going to be pretty subtle, so I am going to want to pop this up. And the best color to use to highlight Shield Brown is actually its friend in its triad, Driftwood.
And to make it go a little bit better with my fact that I've mixed in a little black and brown all along, I'm going to add just a little bit of that. This will keep our leather a little more dull, and that's fine. We don't need to go too crazy with it. We'll work with that. Yeah, it's just hard to remind myself to do that Slayer when I have so much that I want to do, want to and have to do, right? I think I'm going to settle at two videos a month instead of one video a month for the um, YouTube. Um, I always like to reassess after I've, like, I'm glad I tried to jump into that early because I don't think I'm going to be able to do one a week, no way. And I think even three a month is probably too much. So it just uh, shifted my focus away from the writing too much, and I'm like, much as the writing is just a tiny income stream right now, um, I need to stay focused on it because it takes a real, it takes a big creative effort to put a book together for me. Uh, it takes more creative effort than, than I can just like throw at it lightly, right? I need to actually focus on it. So we're going to use a long, a thin, very uh, accurate brush. We're going to use our DaVinci Maestro for this so that we can hit these little straps and bits. I'm going to move this out of the frame and get in focus. Nice, Tristoma. Alrighty, I'm gonna pop some highlighting onto this. For the little parts, I'm not gonna go, even go with that first brown that I mixed. I'm gonna go straight up to the uh, to the shield brown, because when you've got small surfaces, you do not need, nor really can you even notice if you're doing a whole bunch of different layers. You, um, if you grab something that's too close to your original color, you won't even notice it, because the surface is just too small. So there is such a thing as, as overkill, and what it means is that with really tiny areas, you really don't need to um, do nearly as many highlights as you might think. I think I did miss the edge of this bandolier. Yeah, David and I did not get each other any miniatures this year because he has started sounding a lot like me where he's like, I have all these beautiful miniatures to work on, I don't need any more. I think he's starting to feel it, like all the stuff. The weight of all the stuff. <laughs> Which is cool. I was planning, uh, I was thinking about going through mine, my collection and um, maybe posting on the Patreon to see if people would like some stuff and I can make it cheap or find it a good home. Because it's about that time. Hello, Kodiak. Poppy imminent, huh? I went and looked at him yesterday. Is that little smoothie girl's adorable? They were on my Facebook feed. And they all, it's funny how they all look so similar, too. It was obviously, like, it seems like a double sable bird to a pure black, and they all, like, looked, they all look very similar. Oh, puppy's there. Oh, do you have the smoothie? I haven't had time. I didn't go to Discord. Because Discord is also, is it in cute animals? Here we go. Oh, 
Aww. Yep, I have to look through everybody's cute kitties first. Oh my god, Critico! Oh my god, the Christmas outfit. That's adorable. And also, David will be horrified with this photo, and I need to show it to him. <laughs> oh, there we go. So you got a plushie. Nova. That's the name of um, of Kiki's grandma. She's very cute. Very, very cute. So cute. Do you guys all want to see Kodiak? Here you go, guys. Here you go, guys. That's Kodiak's new Shiloh puppy. It wouldn't let you take it off. That's funny. She's like, are you my new human? She's so cute. Yeah. Look at those dark little paws. So the dark little paw tips tell you that, like Kiki, she's going to have a lot of sabling, which is standard when you've got a, one of the parents being a solid black. There's a little smoothie girl way back there in the, in the back. Yeah. Well, at least I'll be able to remember her name really easily. Oh, there's the sleepy photo. You've got to have the smoosh face sleepy photo. Smoosh face. Smoosh face. I love the smoosh, the smoosh faces. Oh, and she's got a nom. We had a picture of that, like, with Leo. With him nomming on his toy. With just the side of his mouth. She'll be a little hellion in no time. <laughs> yeah, that's adorable. She's so cute. She's so cute. Cute, cute. Double liking. Double liking everything. Sweet. What's her temperament like, Kodiak? What does she test as? Did you ask Mindy? I'm sure Mindy, I assume Mindy gave you the rundown. Yeah. Her, because she's a sable, you'll find that her colors change throughout her life a bit. Um, she, she starts out light at eight weeks. She's going to darken up, and then she's going to lighten up again in areas. Um, if her stomach is solid black and her t paw tips are solid black, then you're going to have a very dark dog, like a bi-black sable is what we call that. But um, they could be any, like, you could get any range. She could be medium dark like Kiki, or she could be really, really, really dark. And then usually with sables, what you will notice is that during the summer they will lighten slightly and during the winter they will darken. So we, I call them butterfly dogs. They change. Kiki, what are you doing? Uh-uh. More independent. Okay, you're gonna have a you're gonna have a uh-huh. Yeah, you can work with noise sensitivity. Um, but yeah. Good, yeah. Definitely with independent and confident, definite rule ground rules from day one. Anything you let her get away with, ask yourself, is this going to be as cute when she's 80 pounds? <laughs> yeah, yeah. As long as you put structure in place, you're good. And that the most challenging thing is going to be your kids, is training your kids that she needs rules. Because when it comes to consistency in the family, that's the hardest part, is making sure that everybody is on the same page. So if you make her sit before she gets to go outside everybody needs to make her sit before she goes outside that sort of thing it's gonna be uh it'll be a challenge for you but if you need any advice you can always ask mindy or me that's the question when you've got a shiloh because they're so cute they will have you wrapped around their little paws a lot of them are very manipulative little dogs little puppies and uh but you always have to ask yourself, is it going to be as cute when it's 80 pounds? And if you keep that in mind, you'll be fine. But 
But the the coolest thing that you could probably get your kids into if they're interested, Kodiak is, um, and I had a puppy person who did this, uh, is getting them into dog training. Teaching your kids to how to how to train the puppy. She's a little young to learn anything but the basics right now, of course. Also be aware there will be a point during adolescence where it all flies out the window and you're like, did we ever train this dog? And you just have to go back to basics and they'll revert. So I'm putting a line of highlight here on top of the, the rounded area of this bracer, guys. You can see that right there. But yes, it's cool. I like, I like the more independent um, dogs. I like the harder temperaments. I, I just can't do a soft. So it has to be at least a medium for me. Yeah, they're a German Shepherd pup. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, lots of good experiences. And um, the emphasis is not on lots of experiences. It's on good experiences. So learning to kind of watch your puppy and see what their thresholds are. If they're super bold, then awesome. And if they're not, give them time to adjust to an area. But yeah, that's really exciting, Kodiak. But it sounds like you knew what you were getting into, so I have all faith that you will train her to be an awesome doggy member of society. Um, and if you get really frustrated, because you almost certainly will, because I did, um, and I've, oh, I've, I've raised these dogs before, um, just uh, remind yourself there'll be a maturity shift around six months that you'll see a little bit of progress. There'll be a maturity shift, a big one, between six months and a year. Oh, okay, your wife got super into the research. Good, good, good. That's awesome. Yeah, because if both of you can can work together on it that well you've parented so you know like i said it's it's not so different <laughs> it's really not yeah that's cool Warshadow. yeah these dogs are a bit of work i mean you've got a, when you've got a big shepherd it's a responsibility because it's a big dog it's a big scary dog even even people even though your dog has a heart of gold people will not know it and she will, they will be scared of her. But there are still people who cross the street rather than walk by Kiki on the, when I take her for walks. Ooh, we're getting rain. It's a rainy day. All right, I'm using a little bit of brown liner to separate, see where I'm separating the leather here, just to make sure that I don't lose The detail there and I uh we did Richard we did oh nice Zachariah yeah that could be cool yeah but it sounds like people had a great Christmas that's that's great I always like Christmas because it feels like that's the one day of the year that the whole world just kind of goes to sleep, stays in, plays computer games, eats food. You know, it feels like the whole world is asleep. Everything is closed. It just feels quiet. It's such a nice, quiet day. It's the only day of the year where I feel like that. And I like that feeling. I'm gonna just grab a little bit of rich leather so I can pop um, those rivets out on his gauntlets. And if I want those to really stand out, I'll put a lighter color under them. I've got this driftwood color that I probably could do as an initial color to make those stand out. Yeah, I remember, Hendrik. I just had forgotten until this morning. It's a pleasant surprise. I just heard a big raindrop splatter hit the roof. Now it's uh, quiet, though, so we'll see how much of it actually hits us. Oh, 
Oh, that's pretty cool. That'll give you some cool uh, color scheme ideas there, Zachariah. That sounds neat. But yes, enjoy your puppy, Kodiak. I know you will. This this is the this is the these first few days are the sweet time because the puppy is like figuring out how to come out of her shell and she's adorable. I can't wait to see more pictures as she grows. There we go. Just gotta get all those little rivets figured out. Am I missing any? No, I was really good back here about highlighting all of that, so really it's just the front. Oh yeah. Yeah, smaller gatherings, Richard. That can be nice though, not having a big to do. All right, let's get this highlight color and see. I think I need to thin it just a little bit more. We could do a little bit of stippling texture on these gauntlets. We had a nice couple days of sun. Though yesterday was cloudy with no rain and I just started feeling my seasonal depressive set in. I'm taking my vitamin D and that always helps. But sometimes it just feels too much like winter. That's what I'm like, you know, I could move to Hawaii. <laughs> Do a little stipple. Won't be super visible, but to bring up that highlight. David is painting uh, an Anne model now. He's doing a purple and gold. He stole my color scheme. Stole my crutch. There we go. That looks nice. And I'll get the edges down here a little bit because they stick out. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Everybody, it's because everybody is like, because you've had so much rain and so much drear current, you go, everybody is buying the super strength vitamin D. Hopefully it's not too wet so that that works, Twisted Oma. So yeah, those gauntlets look really good. And I didn't need, there isn't much room on either side of this turquoise band, so I didn't really do much there. I can do a little bit on this leather belt in here. I don't want to do too much here either because it's going to uh, bring it up and it'd be harder to see the gold. So But yeah, um, give us the title of that book again, Zachariah, in the chat. Oh, 
Oof. Wow. Blizzard. The Complete Color Harmony. Pantone Edition. Let me, um... Let me make a note of that. Yeah, interesting. Highly rated. It's a 4.7 stars. Interesting. Yeah. I'll put that on my uh, would like to have um, list. Maybe we can uh, get it and do some experiments on the stream. We could also like show some of those schemes and talk about why they work. All right, now I'm gonna use my chocolate color that I mixed up for that first bit. I'm gonna leave it pretty thick because it's not much lighter than that uh, black and brown. And if I make it too thin, it just won't show up. Oh, adding the coral in, interesting, with the purple and teal. Yeah, it's good to know the why. Although you can explain a lot of it with contrast. I mean, that's really what why everything works. Although the color harmony thing is useful just because like, as far as like color meanings, although remember that those color meanings aren't universal, right? Different cultures will have different um, cultural associations with certain colors. Just like white and black mean different things in different cultures. But it's useful to have that info anyway because then at least you're working with an idea, an underlying idea scheme. And even if you're talking to someone from a culture who doesn't have those associations, it's nice to be able to say, I chose this because at least in this, in our culture, this is, these are colors that would be associated with X. And that's what I wanted to say with this model. So yeah, always worthwhile. Just lightening those up a bit. The uh, foot's going to be a bit more close to black because I used walnut. And I'll probably just uh, highlight up walnut with itself with some off-white in it to make it more of a gray. Oh, I hear the rain. It's 
It's really lightweight, though. No way, you have a painting question? <laughs> <sighs> okay, 603010. It's a thing. It's a way to break down. Um, it's a way to think about color allocation here. Let me do a quick search. I don't tend to use it because my gut does it, but So it's it's taken from interior design and uh, and also a 2D painting. Um, it's essentially a color, color accent. And it's what I talked to you guys about using color accents, um, very small, keeping your color accents small. Um, so essentially what they're saying here is, you know, 60% your main color, 30% your secondary color and 10% your accent. It is one color system that certainly is a way to organize a miniature, but it is not the only way to organize a miniature. Yeah, it's well because I mean you can see it, right? It is it is just one way to think about it. Yeah, right. Yeah, the generating the beard absent of sculpture is actually pretty doable. And and in some ways easier. <laughs> War Shadow. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's like it's a it's a it's a all of these rules are meant to give people who don't have a grasp of, of color and color arrangement um, something to work from, right? So if you are coming into this and you have zero color sense and no grasp of this whatsoever, and you've got three colors picked out for your model, say purple, teal, and gold, you could use this, or purple, teal, and coral, for example, you could use this rule to make sure that you don't overwhelm the model with your accent color um, but I personally feel like, ah, I see. Right, exactly, right. It's, well, even here, even in this, I would argue that if this is more than 10%, you've got a huge throw pillow here. If you really wanted that to be, like, they're doing it for a color. And this is interesting because they're violating their rule in the name of balancing the color around the piece. Notice, however, that the other thing they're doing here is they are using the colors around the piece, right? The yellow is repeated to draw your eye around. And this is extended down here for the same reason. So it almost counts as two pieces. So one, two, three in a triangle to make your eye move around the model, right? Pleasing composition. So honestly, what I would take from this picture is not 60, 30, 10. What I would take from this picture is spreading out and repeating your lesser colors, your non-main color around the model um, in order to balance it and to draw the eye around the figure. If you guys can see that from that picture. So like I said, if you really, if you're really like, baffled by color composition, then the 60, 30, 10 can give you somewhere to start. But it's not like it's not, it's not like it's something you should never violate. That's absolutely not the case. I often do have at least two main colors, right? Although if you look at this, if you consider the purple and the teal on this model as accents, you will see that they are like 10% or less of the, uh, the actual model. But it doesn't even have to be 10%. Like it's just, it's what they're just saying is that your accent should be splashes of color. So teal, teal, teal. We're repeating it around the model, right? We got teal, 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 teal. Um, and the purple is really kind of like just the little, it doesn't even hardly show up on the front of the model, right? It's, and then the two back here. But again, it's very small amounts of color. It works because the purple is working with the golden leather right now. So if you guys can see that, 
the problem is, you know, models aren't aren't uh, sliced up like that necessarily. So you got to kind of figure out what is 10%? What does that mean? What it's really telling you is to only use your accent color in small touches. And per that um, that particular thing where the that accent color was a reddish color, right? Coral and uh, or yeah, it's a red. It's a muted red. So essentially the green and the red here are going to make each other look brighter. So I actually think this is too much. Um, if it were me, I would be I would be like making the judgment call to go with a smaller amount. Um, but, but yeah, cause this green is going to intensify this red. So it's going to pop even more. So that's the thing if you're using complementary accents is, is you need to remember that it's going to, it's going to pop because of what's around it. You only need tiny touches. So this teal still shows up, even though it's really small touches on the model, it really does show up because it's surrounded by like an orangey color, orangey reds, um, that's making it stand out. Also put that blanket up. Oh no, they, they had to have the blanket on the floor actually in order to count as three color pops. Uh, it has to be, it has to, it has to break the plane to count, to, to be good composition. Because they have to make their silly illustration look like it's good composition or it won't look good and people won't believe in the whole concept. Uh. All righty. I'm going to use a little bit of my lightest color, uh, the driftwood, to get just the bottom edge of uh, these little wrappy things, and then we'll do the feet. Um, we're getting we're getting to the end of him. We need to do some MMM on the front, and uh, yeah, yeah, painting to other people's aesthetics is never never good to cement a actual good sense of aesthetics. Or seldom, very seldom, because most people have no idea. How did your friend like their um, dragon bookend, Kroniko? Oh, good. Ah, kitty vet wrangling time. Fun, fun. Oh, there's the rain. Oh, well, that may actually just be the wind is really strong right now and it's throwing leaves everywhere. So what I'm hearing may not actually be rain. It may just be like the wind throwing leaves on our roof really hard. Although I think, I think little splatters of rain because otherwise I'd be hearing it constantly. But yeah, there's some serious gusty wind out there. I'm watching the palm trees just go like this. It will not be a pleasant walk for uh, the Keeks and I, I'm afraid. It's going to be a short one if the weather keeps up like that. Just taking my highlight, gonna get this edge, gonna stipple it. It's a little bit too, uh, too bold. When it shows up as really bold, chances are you've lost your mid-tone. So you should come back a little bit with some of your mid to blend things in. It 
It's his problem now. He's terrified of dropping it. Yep. You had to protect it from your Hellion cats, so now it's his. You don't have to worry about it anymore. All right, I think that leather's pretty good. A little bit of light back here. Not a lot. Okay, I like that. Good. All right. Um, boots. Boots, boots. I'm not that close to the ocean, though, Pendrake. We've got a mountain range, a range of hills. The Santa Cruz Mountains are between us and the coast. So whatever we get from that is typically extremely blunted. Alrighty, I am going to grab some white, off-white. Let's do a Syrian sand. I know, they do have terrible color sense. I'm gonna do a mix with some Assyrian sand and my black and brown and my lighter brown. Make it more gray. More like a grayed out kind of brown and add some yellow. I'm just going to use that. It's very much more muted than anything else, but I want it to be different on the boots. Mm, I did forget one set of leather though. <laughs> Um, I don't uh, use the airbrush really seriously. I every year I kind of I'm like you know I need to use the airbrush more, and every year I'm just like meh. <laughs> um, I don't do a lot of large figures, but when I do, I actually just use a big brush, it's a base coat, and a wet blend. There's like, there's two schools of thought on it, right? On the one hand, it would give me another tool in my toolbox to utilize for miniatures. And it's super fast for big models that you want all one color like dragons. But on the other hand, I paint vanishingly few dragons these days. I did more for Reaper. And if I was still with Reaper and had to paint dragons, I probably would do it. Um, but... The other thing is, like, I'm so good with a brush and I'm so used to using a brush that for me, it's like, do I really want to go and upset my creative process and set up this tool and try to learn to use it, um, you know, and take up the time to do that when I could just grab a larger flat brush and do the same thing in slightly more time, but without the setup breakdown cleanup of an airbrush. My friends have dry brush dragons and, uh, or airbrush dragons, and it works really great. Um, but you do need to invest some time in like learning to use your airbrush. So for you, you've got to ask yourself if that time is worth it, or if you can, you know, set up, if you really are, are daunted by the thought of painting something as big as a dragon, then it's probably worth it to you. I am not daunted by that. I've done it before with brush, not airbrush. So with my wet blending, I feel like I can cover ground fairly quickly. So for me, it's maybe not worth it. I don't know. So I have friends like Michael Proctor and, and Aaron Lovejoy who taught me to basically airbrush seriously, but it's not my favorite tool. It wasn't even my favorite tool when I learned to do it as a kid on 2D surfaces like t-shirts. Um, there's always going to be a certain randomness to it because you're just spraying. 
Uh, and although the fine tips can get quite tight, you're not using that usually when you're doing a dragon. You're using big spray because you want to cover a lot of ground fast. It's really good. What I think it excels at, though, seriously, is stuff that I really don't paint, which is like mecha. Mecha and vehicles. Because you want that super smooth base coat on those things. You want that absolutely smooth base coat. And that's where I'd say the airbrush goes from being optional to seriously recommended or, or necessary. Hey, New Encode, thanks for the resub. 49 months, wow. I heard both of those when I was in um, Edinburgh. Unless he was doing Edinburgh, in which case, eyebrows. He claimly wasn't from there. There's some wrinkles on top of the boots, so I'm going to kind of bring those out, accentuate them a little bit. <laughs> right, yeah, I just use a big brush for the few times, because I don't do a lot of big minis, right? I don't do a lot of dragons. If, if I started doing a lot of dragons, seriously, then I think... I might be convinced. But just like anything else, an airbrush is just a tool. And you just need to ask yourself, is this a tool for me, right? It's not for everyone. You don't have to use it. If you like it, if you think it sounds cool and you play around a little bit and you really enjoy it, then by all means, jump in. That's the way I deal with anything on miniatures, though, is like, am I having fun? Jump in. But if it, if it just feels like annoying to me to have to set up the darn thing and mix up my paint and load it up and practice with it so I'm not going to mess it up because I do it so seldom and then finally spray it and then have to stop and break it down and clean it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to grab a brush. <laughs> And I'm unlikely to paint anything, like, super, super big. Like, I'm unlikely to paint a T-Rock, right? A Troxel or the big Argent Silver Dragon. I'm very unlikely to paint the dragons that are actually big enough that I'd have to grab Ed's house brush if I was going to brush paint it. So a little bit of a rounded highlight there. You can see how these colors make the surface look different than the... The leather above it. But yeah, if you want to see airbrushing um, seriously, go look at what a, go watch a pro do it. In which case, look for um, Reaper does a show every once in a while on its Twitch called House of Vex, and I believe those episodes are also on our YouTube. V E V is in Victor E X, um, because our airbrush is the Vex, and. Uh, Aaron Lovejoy is the one doing the stuff on those House of X episodes, and he's going to talk about airbrushing from a, the level of an expert who does it every day. So you're going to, if you want to learn about it, go and watch those. Hey, Varl, wow, everybody's with the subs. It's Merry Christmas. Thank you. 51 months. That's pretty impressive. No, it hasn't been on in a while. But it's out there, my point is, Pendrake. You can go and look at it on our YouTube. You can also look at Aaron. Aaron um, is uh, the guy, one of the people in charge of Miniature Monthly. Or Miniatures Monthly. I never I never remember if it's plural or singular. But in any way, he um, often has classes. He does, um, he does, on he does courses online. So you could think about signing up for one of those if you wanted to seriously get into it.
So just getting the heel, a little bit of highlight back there. The thing is, um, the uh, thing is about the airbrush, and Erin will be the first to tell you this, is it will never replace brushwork. It's just not like it's 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 best thing is to use it for highlighting, like. It's very good for light. If you're already using it for base coat and you're having, like if you're somebody who needs help like imagining light sourcing, then it's it's a great tool for that because you can aim it top down on the model, right? Pick up the model, tilt it, aim it top down, and it'll essentially tell you where to put your highlights or you can put in your, your initial highlights with the airbrush. So that's kind of, I think, the next step. That and like blending colors, you can learn to glaze with it. That's what... Um, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Sergio. Sergio Cabo Rubio is a very famous Spanish painter. That's what he does to blend his colors. He, he glazes with the airbrush, which is fraught with peril because of the control you've got to have, but you can do it. Um, and it's very fast that way. So if you're looking for speed and you're already familiar, yeah, I would just look around and there's a lot, I think a lot of people who are using it for interesting things. But as mentioned, it's uh, like any other tool. Almost everything you can do with an airbrush, you can do with a brush. And the only thing, like I said, the only thing I feel like I can't do or that is very difficult would be to get that super smooth, even coating on vehicles. It's very difficult to do that with brush, and an airbrush makes it super easy. Otherwise, everything, I feel like everything you can do with an airbrush, you can do with a brush, so. Then it's just your preference of tool. And the, the speed uh, is gonna vary, right? those bands of those creases in the leather. Yeah, it's really good for priming the mirror. Yep, yep. Yeah, and Hal Heraldus is also a great person to look at for that. That's a good point. All right, so highlighted the feet. They're not very shiny, but we don't necessarily need them to be shiny. I need to get the back of the boot here. Probably good enough. I might need, I might, well, one more highlight. So I think I'll mix one more highlight and do a very light one down this front seam on the boot. Yeah, there's a lot of great painters out there doing airbrushing, for sure. And that's just become part of their style, right? They, they like the tool. They really like how, to, how it works. They like how fast they can do things with it. And but yeah, if you're painting a lot of bigger things, especially, that's, that's where you probably turn to it. I know Aaron does a lot of big bigger models and dragons, so. It can also be very useful if you're doing big dioramas for getting, um, just to, like being able to like move the colors over the surface of the diorama and get the, everything base coated super fast um, with harmonizing colors, it can be good for that. Ah, oops. Hey, M. Fontana, thank you for the resub. Wow, everybody, the res it's resub day. Happy holidays indeed. So I'm just uh, taking some more Syrian sand and I'm mixing a little bit of my initial boot color into it, and we're making that kind of gray-brown right there. I'm just going to thin that down and use it just for a light touch along the seams on these boots to show the wear. Okay. 
Yeah, it's definitely resub day. I appreciate it. How crappy is it here? It's probably not that cold. Do, do, do. What is it? Oh, actually, it's pretty warm out. It's just like rain expected. Oh, we're supposed to have like four days, maybe four days of rain. Well, that's good for the winter. It's what we're supposed to have. It'll be kind of annoying because our backyard will go complete mud heap. And the Kiki will have the muddy paws. I'll have to do dog towels. 18 months, sub a, sub and a half anniversary, Polly. Thank you. If none of them have been open, think about um, putting them, like selling them, Twisted Oma. Honestly, from what you tell me, Twisted Oma, just from like all the stuff you guys buy for the hobby, but maybe don't use a lot of, you could probably make a big chunk of money if you sold it. Um, several years ago, a long time ago, back when I was married, previously married, we decided to rent an RV to go to New York for our big Shiloh dog show. And that was going to be like uh, an expensive rental and trip. Um, so we essentially looked at all of our models and all the old games workshop we had and stuff like that. And I started doing eBay auctions uh, like six months in advance. And I ended up making like $2,800 and it almost paid entirely for the vacation. So never underestimate, like if you need cash, don't think that all that stuff doesn't add up. Like it's work to take it to the post office or to get somebody like get one of your kids to take it to the post office when you sell it. And it's work to set up the auctions, but not that much. Um, but you can make a lot of money if you've got a lot of hobby stuff lying around and you realize, you know, I'm never going to get to three quarters of this. We, we cleared out a lot of stuff we would never have gone and painted anyway. Somebody else got to enjoy it and we paid for our vacation. Yeah, right, Richard. It takes work. Yeah, yeah, the cleanup saps my inhabit my uh saps my enthusiasm as well. Alrighty. Let's get this. See, I might need to thin it a little bit more. We'll try it though. Yeah, I I those are some that I gave away before I left Texas, Jeremiah or Zachariah. I gave away and sold a lot before I left. And I'm thinking about doing another another block of it. Yeah. I mean, you might only sell them in with it if you have a ton of them. And, the, and a bunch of them are still in print, sell them in lots. But you'd be surprised at how much that stuff ends up um, adding up to. As long as you're willing to do the, the post office trips and the, the auction upkeep, which is not really that much. The post office trips are, were honestly the part that's, that was, um, that was, took up the most time, but But it's not hard to list on eBay. It's not hard to take a quick pick of the models. Then it's, yeah, it's just the post office runs or however you're going to mail them out. Just make sure you figure out your shipping beforehand so that you make sure you charge enough and figure out the cheapest way you can mail them without damage. A little bit, little bit harsh, so I'm just like stippling a little over the top here on that seam to take it down just a little. There we are. Nice and weathered. Alrighty, I think I can do fur. Fur. I'm gonna grab my corporeal shadow and drop a little bit of a brown of some sort into it. 
probably black and brown. But yeah, I was really impressed at how much money we made off of that. I mean, it was in little bits. And I was working on it, you know, every week I would put up new, uh, at least three or four new auctions. And while I was finishing out the old. I know I've got some stuff in my boxes now that's out of print out of print or expensive and sometimes I'm willing to just like take less than I paid just to get it out of the house but even less than I paid if I paid 60 bucks for a model and I'm offering it for like 40 I'm still gonna make money back on it I don't believe in the sunk cost fallacy it's like I paid the money ages ago if I can get any money for it now then it's good enough Yeah. Yeah, if you collect and you have a lot of print stuff, you definitely can get more if you find the right market. But a lot of people troll eBay for that stuff, for old models. Yeah, with the imminent release of the old hammer. Yep, yep. What? When does that come out, Kernico? I need to get on the... Is pre-order... Has the pre-order come up for that? And what are they, what are they calling it? Are they calling it Warhammer? Okay, the old world announces release date. Got it. Ah, Jesus. Okay, we're not going to that link. Warhammer, the old world. Ah, okay. Early 2024. So probably not pre-orders then yet. Pre-orders are up. I'll have to go to GW. Hmm, nothing. I'm not seeing anything here. Yeah, there's nothing on here yet. Nothing on US. Hi there, Kiki. Wait, do I hear a Kiki? I thought I heard a Kiki. Huh. Maybe I was hallucinating a ghost Kiki. But, uh, all right. So we're mixing up this kind of bluish color because I did more of a bluish highlight on his hair. And I want to do that on the fur as well. So I've got my Corporal Shadow, which is largely blue. I'm mixing just a little bit of the um, black and brown into it. It's about a two to one. 
Then I'm going to pop some pure white into it and see what my color is. Yeah, fantasy was my first love as far as Warhammer went, so I'm likely to get the starting box. It's an interesting color. It's not quite as blue as I wanted it, so I'm going to pop a little bit more corporeal shadow into it. Not that I have anyone to play with any of it yet. Still working on Tyranids, but I could be distracted by fantasy. It depends. It depends on how long I have to wait for an army I like to come out. So is it Bretonians and who? Do we know who the two armies are for the starter set? We'll go there. That's a good color. Tomb Kings? Interesting. Yeah, maybe I won't buy the set then. Because those are neither of them are my favorite armies. Much as I love Egypt, the Tomb Kings models are just a lot of NMM gold. Alright, so we've got that lighter gray there that we can see. So we're going to use these two colors. I don't know. Maybe the models will convince me. Separate army boxes? Good. I'd be interested in Wood Elves or Skaven or Chaos. Those are the models. Those are the armies that I was always interested in. Wood Elves were what I played, but I also had a Chaos Army at one point. Very small Chaos Army. Alrighty, let's get some of this fur done. So we're going to use these two gray colors. Pop this back. Going to start with the dark, the dark gray. And I need to remember that I need uh, to have my black around for this. Separate army box uh, boxes does make sense, but they almost always have a starter set. Because it's an easy sell. <laughs> Seriously goofy. Yeah, there was some goofiness in Old Warhammer. Though so it'll be nice to like. It'd be nice to get a, a set of new Wood Elves and a set of, you know. Because I, I, I mean, I like the Sylvaneth are really cool, but I, I really like the Wood Elves better than the Sylvaneth in Age of Sigmar. I miss my Wood Elves. It is true. Wood Elves do traditionally live next to Bretonia. I like the Bretonians. It's just I don't like the playstyle as an army. The models are beautiful, some of them. All right, so a little bit of gray here on the top to get some of that detail to stand a little bit. One new mini per box. Really? If it's all just old stuff being brought out, I'm not interested at all. Gotta do better than that, GW. You have an op you had an opportunity to redo so much and to just go back to doing the old kits. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't know. Bye, Crowley. Have fun. Oh, yeah, Cities of Sigmar. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, it, why bring back, like... It doesn't make sense to me that they'd not have new models for everything. Unless the idea was literally, hey, we've got all these old molds sitting around. We're not making money on it. Maybe we should make money on it. In which case, I'm my respect is gone. All right, so just really just bringing up some highlights on the top of the boots. And just enough, to picking out details just enough so that you can see the fur. But make it too much and you'll lose the fact that it's black. Yeah, right. One would think that they would not reuse. Ah, oh, so they're bringing back the old men at nights and the old mounted knights. Apparently they are reusing some of the old kits. Let's them cut costs. Eh, meh. Meh, that's all I'm saying. Not into it. I mean, the Wood Elves had very few plastics, but we did have our Glade Guard and our Archers. But I would certainly ask for better kits these days. But yeah, I cash grabbed to combat 3D print versions, right? Yeah, no thanks. I'm not going to participate in that. Like, if they're going to do it, then freaking hopefully, you know, redo the rules, give it a balance, a rebalance, add some new units to different different things. Maybe if you use one old kit. I don't know. But even then, those old kits, they're so dated now. They are so dated compared to what can be done now. Yeah, it better be a lot of new stuff. Because they're... I mean, that's what they're clientele wants. We want we all want new models. Sexy new models. That's it. Yeah, if I'm not if I don't think the models are awesome enough, I'm not gonna buy it. I have lots of things I can spend my money on. Yeah. Yeah, it would make sense to repurpose a little. If the City of Sigmar stuff is really good, then that makes sense to repurpose it a bit. There we go. Her up here.
we shall see. That said, I suppose a lot of their new new players have never had old old Warhammer, so I suppose it's all new to them. Good. And now we just have gold and gold and steel for the next time. So he's almost done. Then we gotta do basing. Figure out, figure out more basing, more basing. And oh no, I need to figure out a model. Hmm. Maybe I'll go get my traces and let you guys choose at the end of the stream. Hold on. what I've got. Oh, we were going to think about Dragonborn, weren't we? Let's see. As usual, not choosing these doesn't mean we're not going to uh, have them. Just means they don't get done right away. I'm going to bring our bloop, bloop. We have our bee. Remember, we have our honeythorn knight. I prepped him ages ago, and we never did anything with him. Likewise, a uh, dude here who actually has a good OSL effect. Got some cool uh, wood effect on him. Could do some cloth. So there's him. Likewise, I prepped him ages ago. We have Librarian Sophie. We have Dragonfolk Paladin. Uh, yeah, we'll keep those. I have one other one, but we'll just we'll just keep it to those. All right, we need a poll, Quindy, for the model to replace Aristotle. So next new model, you can call it the next new model poll. Tomorrow's model. Yes. So now it is uh, time to. Where did I put my glasses? How am I supposed to look at these without my glasses? <clears throat> Oof. Let's see here. Yeah, these are all really good sculpts, so any one of them is just lovely. I'm trying to figure out which one I want to paint. All right, people. Vote, vote, vote. I have to know if I have to prep somebody. 
Ooh, Lyrian Sophie and Dragonfolk Paladin are like neck and neck. But Dude with Torch is only one behind. And again, just because we don't select this one this time doesn't mean we won't select it next time. <laughs> well, now we now, now vote, <laughs> Richard. <laughs> if you want to vote, you've got to vote. You can't just say it in the chat. I don't care about saying it in the chat. All I care about is you actually clicking on the poll. Oh, Sophie edges ahead. What? Sophie's still ahead. Dragonfolk Paladin's chasing. Snapping at her tail. Or her not tail. Oh, it's exciting. B Knight sadly only has one. B Knight is underwhelming compared to the others. Sorry, B Knight. You'll get we'll get you there. We'll get you there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it is up top, so maybe. Oh, a long time ago, seriously. I only did one of the hair folk. The other hair that I've had is from, uh, I had Don't Do It on this stream, but I was working on this one for myself from Moonlight Minis. But the, the hair folk was done ages ago, last year. Second choice doesn't count. Oh, the mouse. No, the mouse is still in rotation. We uh, we got a lot done on her hair. We have a lot left to go on mouse and, and antagonist. Mouse and mouse wraith. All right, we need a tiebreaker. Somebody needs to break that tie between Sophie and Dragonfolk. Who hasn't voted? If you haven't voted, you have to vote. Break the tie. Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. There's our tiebreaker. Everybody else can be lazy now. <sighs> All right. I'm not going to crack open this plastic until I'm sure, though. I'm not going to crack it open until I'm sure. No, you cannot vote again. <laughs> yeah, the Mouse Ghost video is good. I talk about a bit of spectral, my philosophy of painting spectral stuff. I like to do it. I like to paint a spectral or a ghost every once in a while for exactly that reason, seriously, because not a lot out there on that. Looks like Paladin's going to win. We have, we have just a little bit of time. We're just going to let this thing expire. I like the Paladin, so I'm good. Oh no, somebody voted for Sophie. Oh, somebody's trolling us. But now we need now we need another vote to break the tie. Otherwise I'm gonna have Quindy I'm gonna have Quindy uh, vote. She can break it. But I might not do that OSL, seriously. I don't have a concept for OSL for that model and I'm not sure I'm gonna use it use it. Yeah. Okay, we ran out. Quindy and I will discuss. Quindy and I will discuss behind the scenes. Yeah, I'm not sure that I will use the lantern because it is a very small lantern and I'm not sure of the angle. I'd have to look at it and decide if I wanted it. Maybe I do. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Yeah, y'all are crazy for OSL. I don't get it. I did such an awesome job on showing you how to do OSL for mouse. I love this model so much and how it turned out. And we even did like, you know, dual light sourcing and you guys are like more, more. And I'm just like, what? I already did it. <laughs> Go watch the guy in videos. <laughs> All right. Yes. Quinny and I are going to put our heads together and decide. And then I'm going to break open whoever I figure. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, for tuning in everybody tomorrow. 
Tomorrow there will be a mystery mini. <laughs> Decided upon by committee. <laughs> a very small committee. Um, all right. So you guys have fun. And thank you for tuning in. And I will see you again on the morrow for Thursday. Yay. We only have a three-day week. This is awesome. Have a great one, everybody. Thanks for voting. I'll see you tomorrow.